Welcome back. I'd especially like to welcome uh, all my new subscribers who've helped me set another milestone uh, in the last week or so, 700 subscribers. And it would appear that uh, the YouTube algorithm is finally starting to spread the love and I've reached 60,000 views. But anyway, so on with the show. Uh, so I've finished that V-block in the last video, so it's time now to make those tool holders. So follow me over to the mill and we'll get on with that. Alrighty, so uh, first up I was going to fly cut it, but I've still got this 12mm cutter in here, so I think I'll uh, just face this one end off first before I do anything else. Head in the right direction would be better. Alrighty, I've had to take a fair bit off there, and there's still a little tiny bit here that I missed, but I've got to take some thickness off this, so... That'll be okay. Well, fabulous finishes continue, but that's the same tip I was using to make the V-box, and it is getting a little blonde. But uh, thus, this stuff here. But that's the side I want to take most of the stuff off, so I've just done it as a clean-up pass. So I'll flip that over and we'll cut the other side. I'll clean up the other side and then we'll come back to this one and chomp a heap of it off. So doing this one will only be a clean up pass. I think I might change the tip. That's still got a few marks in it from uh, the original finish. But this battery's about to go flat, so I won't bore you with that. I'll, I'll give it another pass and I'll come back to you. Alrighty, I'm going to take a millimetre and a half off here, so I'm going to use this 5 8 end mill with a funny uh, grind on it and just take it off with that. I'm going to run this, which means the compressor will be running a fair bit, so it'll be awfully noisy. going to take a while so I'll bring you back later. Well that took quite a while. I pity that damn face mill of mine makes so much noise and it's so useless otherwise you could have used that. But anyway that's a millimetre and a half taken off there. It's a mill thicker than the uh, ones I've already got. I'd rather make it a little thicker than a little you know the same size because they don't have a very deep tool hole section. Alright so next up I'll uh, let this damn thing cool down because it's red hot. Um, I'll fly cut this and then get it out of there and mark it all up ready to cut the dovetails in it. Alrighty so uh, I had everything cool down and I've milled this face off with the fly cutter again. I've marked it up you can see there, I hope you can see it there, there are two sets of lines here. They are the little step in the bottom which is narrower than the width of this and the, the width of the opening in it. And I've marked a line here which is the, the deepest part down and there's a step in there. But we'll, we'll machine down to the deepest part and to the, the narrow of the two lines there uh, and then we'll step up a little and we'll machine out to the other two lines. There's something I haven't done yet and the reason, and that is these sides here I haven't milled them off. Uh, when I made the V-block I didn't machine that side either and the reason is, it's a little bit of forward thinking, when I go to cut this into three pieces it will get harder and harder to hold it so I left that other one exactly the same as this so that I can use it back up inside the vise in the, in the saw to help hold this while I cut this into three pieces. Something's gone haywire with my little uh, z-axis. I had it set to zero and I've only gone down two millimetres and suddenly it's saying minus 13. 
shorts going on there anyway so I'll have to wing it from here god damn is that noise I'll bring you back later alrighty so uh, spent forever hogging out all that uh, material in the center there so now I've raised it up uh, 0.6 of a millimeter and uh, I'm going to take it over to the second set of lines because it's making a hell of a racket my wife's had a little bit about it already this damn thing stopped working too so I'm just blowing a bit of air and put, dripping a bit of oil on at the moment well they didn't put much of a step in the bottom so they might come up a bit more see what's going on here now I think we've uh, chipped the corner off the damn tool we have to that's leaving like a radius in there but anyway this battery's about to go flat well that's a right bummer that is it's chewed the corner off the bloody thing oh well looks like I'm up for a new one but I have been giving this thing a hiding since I got it so anyway it's getting late in the day I'm just going to switch over to a 12 mil end mill and I'll finish this off without bothering the videotape it and I'll Tomorrow morning I'll uh, I'll get back in, we'll get, get in there with the dovetail cutter and cut the dovetails because I've got a hell of a mess to clean up here. Alrighty, quick update uh, for I call it quits for the day. I've finished all that now. I was shooting for uh, 24 in here. I've come in at 23.9, thereabouts. Close enough. Quite happy with the finishes I've ended up with now that I've switched over to that end mill. <laughs> Instead of chewed up the roughing cutter. But anyway, so uh, I'll call it quits for the day. In fact, I don't think I'm going to clean this bench up a little. There's a lot of water in amongst all that coolant spray, so I might let that dry overnight before I vacuum it up in the morning. So I'll get back into this tomorrow and we'll cut the dovetails. Well, viewers, that was one hell of a mess I left myself to clean up here yesterday. In fact, I, it seemed a lot worse this morning when I came out than it did yesterday when I knocked off. Another wet, miserable day here today. I thought we were over the worst of the wet season after a relatively fine week last week. But anyway, uh, it's Sunday today and my wife has begged me not to make any noise. After all the noise I made yesterday doing this thing. I uh, got this out this morning and uh, I'm starting to wonder if it'll actually do the job. I bought this back uh, when I was still using these horrible little aluminium things. And it's, you know, it's probably just big enough to do those. But these steel ones, they're a bit deeper. I might actually struggle to uh, to cut that in there. But anyway, if I, if I have to, I'll just increase the size of the flats on here. Should get me down in there, I hope. Because then the other one I've got uh, is a whole lot bigger. It wouldn't even fit in there. And I bought that one for uh, machining the dovetail rails for the table. Uh, on another issue, a lot of the problems, I, rigidity problems I have with this, I think comes from all of this length here. And this morning I bit the bullet and ordered a, a new ER32 collet with a built-in Morse Taper 2 shank, which is only, I'd say, about that long, which I think might help things a bit. But anyway, so like I said, wife doesn't want me doing anything today. She doesn't want me making noise. So I might have a day off and I'll get back it into this tomorrow. Another wet, miserable day here today. Despite my wife's protestations yesterday about not making any noise and be honest with you I didn't really make any. I snuck out here yesterday afternoon and, and decided to see how this little cutter was going to go and I've been making some cuts across here it's, it's going pretty well only taking light cuts the deepest one I took was 0.25 of a millimeter because I don't want to chew this up I don't want to break it because it'll take too long to replace it anyway just waiting for the neighbor to go to work and we'll get out here and do some more Seems to be holding up okay. Well, in all honesty, that was a cut too far because this edge here now is really rough and jagged which means it's rubbing up in here so that was at 2.4 millimeters I'll come on over and do this other side here I won't bother to videotape it and uh, and then we'll get in and measure it might have to uh, mill some more off these faces so I can get in a bit deeper yet 
I don't know if you can read that. The size I'm shooting for in there is 16.4 and all I've got at the moment is 15.8. According to the DROs, both of these have been machined in the same distance. So uh, I need to take another 0.3 out of each side, but I can't because I'm already up against the side here. So I think what I will do is knock maybe 0.6 or so off each of these faces with an end mill and go back in there again. Alrighty, so I did what I said I was going to do, I knocked 6.6 uh, .6 off each of those two faces here and I've cut it in another 0.3 on each side and it's uh, come in at 16.39 and I'll shoot for 16.4 That'll do me, let's see if this damn thing will fit Moment of truth that I seem to be having quite a bit of in recent times I won't get on there, oh look at that, it goes on and it locks up, so Looks like we got that right. Alrighty, so all I've got left to do now is uh, face off this end that I didn't do originally and uh, I'm going to chop this up into three. Alrighty, so uh, this thing measures 90.3 so that'll give me 30.1 each end Mark it from each end now that I've squared up these ends Let's run it all over this bit here, make sure it looks like it's 30mm uh, Looks a bit under actually Anyway, I'll cut them on the line then I'm going to uh, I'm going to set them up in the in the vise and run the fly cutter across them. They'll all be the same height. Uh, got my replacement uh, roughing cutter before, and he ordered it Saturday night. This guy's really good. Got it away yesterday and arrived here about 10 minutes ago. So all's good. My roughing cutter again. Over to the saw. Alrighty. So this is what I was referring to earlier on about using the uh, V block in here to help keep it all squared up. Uh, to stop this from pushing down, I've got a jacking bolt up underneath here. And I think I'm going to not cut all the way through this, maybe three quarters of the way through, flip it round and cut it the other one. Maybe finish it by hand or uh, come up with some. I've got another idea in my head, but we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. Alright, I'll call it quits at that. Oh yeah. Start again. I hope the hell this doesn't tear itself out. Well, I'm so glad I saved that. Wouldn't have got away with this without that PC. Well, saw cuts leave a bit to be desired. Anyway, we'll square them up. Uh, so I've got these unmachined sides of the bar hard up against here and a piece of aluminium in here to try and stop them from moving too much. Oh yeah! Bit much! Let's try that. It's clear, isn't it? Yep. I'll just look at this, it looks like it might have bent that then, the way that's wobbly. That's not good at all, it's just as well I've just ordered a new collet chuck, isn't it? Well that's a real bummer, looks like uh, I'll be doing this if I can and uh, nothing much else until that new collar chuck gets here.
This battery's about to go flat, so uh, I'll finish this and I'll put a new battery in and bring you back when I'm really done. Well, I have to admit, with the benefit of hindsight, I really should have uh, attacked that with something else first and taken the worst of it off. That took forever, an enormous amount of passes, and now I've got a bent arbor. But anyway, I'll uh, finish these off with that, and then uh, I don't think I'll be doing any milling until that new truck gets here, unless I can source an arbor out of Bangkok, because that one came from China and it took bloody weeks to get here. But anyway, I'll continue on. Well, I don't know what's going on here. Old, old mate's got the music bashing away over there. Uh, after that little crash before, this was wobbling around like crazy. And I've had it out, put it back in again, and the wobble's gone. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I thought that, that arbor was bent for all money. Well back to awesomely satisfying finishes that's absolutely fantabulous all right so um, I'm not gonna these three will be all different and uh, I'll explain that tomorrow morning because it's getting late in the day and I've had a gutful alrighty so uh, I mentioned yesterday afternoon that I was going to make three different types of holders my original intention was to just to make three of these but I already have plenty of them and I'm using two of them to hold boring bars so I decided last night I was going to make one of these, one to take the boring bar and one of these. But I thought, well, why make one of these at all when I can just make two boring bar holders and pick two up from these. So that's what I'm going to do with them. Now, I bought this uh, parting tool because I got sick of breaking the little carbide thing. And the only holder I have is this little old shitty aluminium thing. And it doesn't work properly and won't fit that tool post. So I'm going to attempt to replicate this in some way, shape or form. I do have an idea in my head of how to do it and uh, that's what I'm going to do, make one of these somehow. Okay, so this video is starting to get a little long. I won't go into making the boring bar ones because it's pretty simple really. Just put it in the holder, square it up to the chuck, put a centre drill in here, centre drill it, drill it, shove a ream or up drill and tap some holes in it and put the adjusting screw in. So they're, they're pretty simple those ones so I won't bother video any of that and I'll just video some of what I do to the, uh, the parting blade holder. Well viewers, it's taken me uh, a lot longer to finish this tool holder off than I was expecting. So uh, I think I'm going to have to make this a two part video. and. Partly because I think it's it's my own design, more or less, for this parting tool holder. And I think it would make an interesting video pretty much on its own. So I'm going to call this quits on this one. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.